Hey guys, EBP Man here, and back from CES with another product, and this is the T95Z Plus uh, Android TV box from Mikaso. Let's check it out. So one of the things I like about this box is the fact that it's running um, Android 6. Uh, most of the boxes that we're seeing and that we reviewed are in the 4s, Android 4, maybe Android 5. So I like the fact that this is um, using a more modern uh, version of the Android operating system, which means uh, you should expect better performance, um, better resiliency when it comes to security and also more uh, compatibility. This box itself is 4K. Uh, it does um, is Wi-Fi capable and it does support both channels. As we mentioned, it's uh, using the latest version of Android and it's 3D capable. If we look at the specs here for a second, let's go ahead and look at some of the features and at least uh, the processor. It does have a octa-core uh, CPU. Uh, it has uh, two gigabytes of RAM, 16 gig of storage. It has two USB uh, ports. LAN connectivity as you would expect and uh, a power cord. Now as far as the footprint of this box uh, I have to say that this is pretty small so what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, the unboxing and see uh, what's inside. So inside the box you're going to find your remote control, uh, a guide that's just going to have different accessories and things you can purchase from Mikaso. You do have a user guide, power cord, a HDMI connector and then you have your Android TV box. Now the box itself is one of the smallest boxes that we reviewed on the channel. I'm just going to place my hand right on top of it so you can see the size. So again, um, almost palm size, uh, very similar to what we're seeing in maybe some of the smallest Roku's or even the, the smaller uh, versions of the um, Apple TV. So very tiny. Uh, as we look at it, it's also very thin. Um, it's not quite even an inch thick. And if we rotate it, uh, you'll notice that on the back here, you do have a couple ports there. You do have um, USB, you have the Ethernet, you have optical out, and we'll continue to rotate. Here you have power, you have um, HDMI coming out, and then audio video cable um, output, as well as USB, and then also a, a micro SD. Now once you power up the unit, you're going to notice that you have an LED ring that goes all the way around and then you do have a clock in front of you uh, with additional information appearing um, here on the side. Uh, the logo um, with the model number, so T95Z+, and uh, pretty much that's um, all that you'll see that will light up. Uh, you see on the back here your optical area is lit up as well, um, just ready for an optical connection. So uh, good looking box at least on the startup. Let's go ahead and see what the software looks like. So the first thing I want to do is give you a sense of what the startup process is. So this is startup from cold boot. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug it in and you can see that the logo immediately shows up on the screen here. Uh, so we're going to let it go through the startup process just to see how quickly um, this unit will boot up very common to have some sort of animation um, on the boot sequence and we see that so far it's moving pretty good and it's done so that was uh, what you would expect if you start it from a code boot so let's go ahead and try we're gonna use the remote control that we have here and I'm just gonna press the power off now it is a line of sight remote not Bluetooth so we're gonna go ahead and power and now it's off and now what we're going to do is going to press this button again to turn it on and it's on so the startup process varies from the code boot you saw how long it took to a warm boot meaning that it was already uh, uh, booted up but um, all the LEDs were off when I powered it down and I think that that's something else that I want to make sure that you guys are aware of and we'll uh, I'll show you the box now the box is off and when it's off none of the LEDs are on which is great I was a little concerned that you know if you're in a dark room if you have this in a bedroom or somewhere where you just don't want the LED bothering you as soon as you turn it off it disappears now from settings area we're going to go into settings let's see um, and this is where you can actually see um, the unskinned version of Android we'll go over to about check that out I want to make sure that we have um, the right version and we'll go down and as you can see right there Android version 6.01 and that's what you want you definitely want to be able to have an Android box that has the most current firmware or software and the other thing that I like as well is look at right here August 1st 2016 so that was the last time this box received a security patch and given uh, all of the uh, viruses and uh, the whole problems with the Internet of Things uh, catching viruses and being used for denial service attacks you want to make sure that you have a box that has the most current software and gets updated like we can see that this one is 
Now, launching Kodi is pretty straightforward. All you do is go to the, um, the Kodi app and you launch, and you notice that this is running the most uh, recent version of Kodi, version 16.1. Uh, there is a newer version that is in release candidate one, which is Kodi 17, uh, but this is the current build that is available uh, and for all users, and it's the most stable build at this time. Once the release candidate becomes a general release, you could probably upgrade this to version 17. Now this box uh, came uh, pre-configured with the TV add-ons. Uh, so what you're seeing is instead of it being just a plain vanilla version of Kodi and having to go through some type of configuration, the actual setup process automatically configured your, your add-ons uh, so you can see that Exodus is already present, Film on TV is present, and as I go over music um, programs you'll see that all of these um, these add-ons have already been installed for you, which is going to make it a lot easier for you to use. Now, anytime you start a Kodi application, you want to make sure that the bottom right-hand corner that you see there takes place. You want to wait for an update before you actually start using it. So when you shut it down and you start it up, just give it about 30 to 60 seconds to see if there's anything updated. Let it do its update, and then you can go ahead and start viewing content. Uh, once this is up, completed, we'll go ahead and review kind of the playback features and see how everything looks, and then we'll continue reviewing the box. Alright, so let's go ahead and see how Kodi works, and for those of you who have never um, experienced Kodi, uh, you'll see the benefits of having Kodi. Uh, so Kodi um, really gives you the ability to view content um, and to be what is known as a cord cutter. In other words, not having to subscribe to a specific uh, service or provider. It does have an enormous amount of content that's available. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll go into TV shows just so you can see uh, what we have here. And I'll you know, highlight uh, probably about the most popular, and I'll choose that. And what it would do is it would look at what are the most popular TV shows uh, that are being obviously watched by people like you and me. It's going to sort them and it's going to display them in a really nice format. It's going to be very similar to like a Netflix format. So we'll let it go through the process. This is the first time that it's doing it, so it may take a couple seconds, as you can see. Uh, but now what it's doing is it's going to bring up the artwork. It's going to bring up all the content. And since it's really the first time us accessing this section, it sometimes takes a little longer the very first time. So literally, once the content comes up, all you do is go to what you want to see. Uh, you select it. And then you choose your season. And what I'll do is I'll choose uh, an episode that I'd like to see. And it will go through the process of sourcing it. So what you see now is it's sourcing the episode that you want for the show that you want. And it typically takes about 20 to 30 seconds. It'll count down. And then once it's already, or in this case, count up, I mean, it finds all the sources that are available. It will give you a list uh, to choose from. And that list is going to be broken down by... Um, quality. So you can see content up to 4K or as low as standard definition. So every plugin specializes in a different uh, format. Kodi tends to, uh, for um, Exodus, sorry, for Kodi, tends to focus on like the 1080p and lower. Um, I really haven't seen much 4K uh, with this plugin, but as you can see, it lists uh, several uh, sources for this episode in HD. Uh, we're going to go ahead and choose one of them, and we'll just let it go through the process of just you know, seeing or trying to stream. If it's not available within the first one that I chose, it will automatically go to the next one and to the next one. And it typically goes three to four down before you have to ch uh, choose it again. So you notice it skipped from option one all the way up to option four. And that's because it's looking for uh, a stream that's available. We'll let it do that and then uh, see what the playback looks like as soon as it finds an available stream. So let's try one more. So I'm going to go into Vikings, and I'm going to go into the uh, most current season. So we'll wait for the artwork you can, um, or what you can just do is just continue to move over, and it's highlighting each one. We'll just go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to choose, um, I'll choose any episode. I'm going to go to episode 12 and select it. It's going to do the same thing, and we'll see what the stream looks like. So here is um, another show, and you can see um, it's already started. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward. Um, and again, just uh, doing the uh, fast forward. And it seems to be uh, really picking up really fast. And again, just wanted to show you the quality of the stream and how, depending on who the provider is, your content will be fast or slow. And you notice that as I'm just popping forward, it's keeping up really nicely. Now, the box also has film on TV. 
Um, Film on TV is, is a separate app. It's not a Kodi app, but it does also give you a lot of rich content. So let's go ahead and check this one out. Uh, streaming live content, but it also has content that is um, not live. So what you're seeing here is uh, really the application showing um, live content. Um, it's pretty fast, and you can have either standard definition or, or high definition content. Um, it does have several countries as well as you can see here on the left side. So you have UK sports, you do have um, the US, uh, some pay channels as well. And it's a great option for those of you who are looking for um, just being able to see um, some regular television or some global TV. Now the real power of the app really comes from the fact that this also has access to the Google Store. So this is a standard um, Android box that will run any app that's available on the Android marketplace. So the fact that you have um, the Google Store access gives you access to the uh, thousands and thousands of apps that are available on the store and again giving you a lot more flexibility than ever before in a TV box. So this concludes my review of the T95Z Plus Acaso Android TV box. If you have any comments or questions leave it in the comment area below. Don't forget to hit subscribe and if you'd like to see another video just check up the corner right here. Thanks for watching.